Okay, those of you who are taking the thesis seminar, I wanted to spend a few minutes talking about your organization. And as we complete the last week here, finishing our literature review, I want to give you some uh, tips or really some things of, to look at in your own writing. Things that I'm going to be looking for and kind of the order in which I'm going to be looking at some of your, um, your text. So let me open up here an example. And you can find the same example in our folder where you can locate all of our documents here. It's called example. But I want you to look at the thesis statement, the research questions, the headings, and the topic sentences that I've created here in this example. This is really the way in which I'm going to look at your own work and uh, actually the, the order in which I'm going to look at your literature review. So for instance, I'm going to begin with the research questions. So remember to have your research questions at the end of your literature review like I have it here just before the method section. In this case I have the research question, how, how can English language teachers use cell phones in the English language learning classroom in a way that promotes social interaction? Now social interaction I could have chosen many other topics. Uh, I've listed a few here but there are many more. But the point I want to make here is that in this case I'm asking a how question and this is going to relate very much to the rest of my literature review. Now here I have a how question and I'm just going to use this one central question. You might have two or three questions uh, that relate but you're probably going to deal with one general question overall. It could either be a how question or a why question. So now going back now to my thesis statement, which should appear at the end of your introduction, which we're not going to worry about yet, but it's going to be before your main section. So make sure you have your uh, thesis statement just before your first section. There should be no additional text after your thesis statement, and for now there shouldn't be anything. It's not necessary to have anything before your thesis statement. But in this case, my thesis statement I am attempting to answer my research question. So again, I have my question, how can English language teachers use cell phones in the English language learning classroom in a way to promote, that promotes social interaction? Here's the answer. Cell phones should be used in the English language learning classroom by allowing teachers to be more accessible to each learner, promoting peer assessment, and creating open and online opportunities to collaborate with those outside the classroom. All right, so looking here at my uh, thesis statement here, I think I'll actually make a change. So here, cell phones. I think I'll say can be used in the English language learning classroom by allowing teachers to be more accessible. All right, so here I have my topic, cell phones. Now you can, you can have a more specific topic, you could use a relative clause to include in your topic, you could have adjectives to be more specific if you're going to talk about English language teachers. Okay, so this is just an example, but there are many different options here that you can include, but basically your subject is going to be your topic. Now your opinion is going to be basically your verb, uh, and in this case it's going to be, can be used in the English language learning classroom. Okay, so cell phones is my topic, can be used in the English language learning classroom, is my opinion, and here are the ways. Okay, now in my opinion I could have also indicated um, something more specific, talking about speaking, listening and speaking, cell phones can promote uh, in fact, here I state down here collaboration. I could have indicated collaboration up here to make it more specific. Okay, so definitely uh, there are ways to make your opinion more specific by using relative clauses, adjectives, and so on. But here I have listed three different ways that I'm going to support my opinion in terms of the topic. The first, allowing teachers to be more accessible in each, uh, to each learner. 
Notice that the first section now of my literature review is going to be taken from this idea of allowing teachers to be more accessible to the learner. Here's my first section. Teacher accessibility through open and online communication channels. This is going to be my first section. Again, it's coming directly from this first uh, way. Now the second way I've listed, promoting peer assessment. If we scroll down here, here's my second section. Peer assessment via online environments. Okay, so again, I'm taking it directly from my thesis statement. And finally, my third way is creating open and online opportunities to collaborate with those outside of the classroom. Social media that promotes collaboration with those outside of the classroom. Okay, so it's coming almost word for word from my thesis statement. I could have mentioned social media here to be even more specific. I kind of threw this together. You're noticing that as I'm going through this process, I'm, I'm still changing and tweaking. And, and this is uh, one example that certainly if I spent more time, I could it could be better, right? But this is what I'd like for you to look at when you draft your, uh, your literature reviews. You have your research questions at the end. Then you have your thesis statement that directly answers your research question. And then you're checking in the ways or the reasons that, in, that are basically appearing after your opinion in your uh, thesis statement that you're aligning those directly with those main sections of your literature review. Again, anywhere from two to four is a good number. So you might have two uh, ways listed in your thesis statement. You may have four. Uh, for this example, I have three. Now the next step that I, that I talked with a lot of you about is the importance of creating a sentence outline. And this is an example. So each one of these sentence outlines, each one of these sentences, I should say, is basically a topic sentence. The topic sentence that's going to begin each of my body paragraphs. So you can easily turn in your sentence outline into your text. Now notice I don't have numbers here, so when I say outline, I don't necessarily mean that you need to use Roman numerals, for example. What I mean is that you're using this as a guide so that you can see how you're organizing your ideas from one idea to the next. Each one of these is going to be a paragraph. So I'm going to develop a paragraph about this idea, then I'm going to try to lead into this idea, and so on. But by creating a sentence outline like this with all of your topic sentences, you can see at a glance how you're organizing your ideas. And of course, this is when I can provide you feedback about the organization. If I don't see this, it's hard for me to know how you're thinking or how you're planning on organizing your ideas. But let's say that I don't see any of this beforehand and you finish your literature review. This is what I'm looking at in this order. So imagine that all of these are paragraphs and you've completed your lit review. This is the order in which I'm going to look at your paper. I'm going to start with the research questions. I'm going to start at the very end. I'm going to read your research question or questions. Then I'm going to read your thesis statement. Before I read anything, before I read the rest of the 2,000 words that you have below, I'm going to read those two parts, those two sections. And if there are issues or problems there, I'll make comments Right at that point. And some of those comments may influence the rest of how you have organized the rest of your document. Okay, we, we spent about three weeks now talking about the thesis statement and the research questions, trying to get those aligned along with the, the main headings. So it's very important. This is where I'm going to be starting. Once those two align, I feel that those are uh, that the thesis statement answers the research question. Then I'll look at the ways or the the ways or the reasons that you've stated in your thesis statement. I'm going to check each of the headings. Right? And then I'll, I'll look at that. Once those are aligned, then I'll start looking at each heading. So I'll look at this heading, and I'll just look at the topic sentence of each paragraph. Each paragraph. And I'll check just those topic sentences without reading the rest of the paragraph, just looking at the topic sentences to see if the more, um, and what I'm checking for is organization, to see, okay, does this make sense, this idea before this idea before this idea, okay, and do all of these relate to this section, 
Same way with this. I'll look at this topic sentence and then this topic sentence and the rest of them for this particular section and see how they relate to this heading and so on. Then, once I finish that, then I'll dive into each of the paragraphs, looking at supporting sentences, looking for the meal plan, basically. Looking for evidence, analyze, linking, or summarizing sentences, seeing how the order in which you're presenting your evidence and your analysis, making sure that the evidence, the citations, support the topic sentence, that we're on topic, that uh, everything aligns. Okay, so I wanted to provide this overview in this example, um, and it's not complete, so I, you know, down here below I haven't completed some of these sentences, but the idea here is that you, you think in terms of topic sentences as they relate to each of the sections, you're looking at each of the sections as level two headings as it relates to your thesis statement, and you're looking at your thesis statement in terms of how it answers your research questions. Now, the, the reason for doing this is to make sure that our lit review at the end of the day is going to align with the, ser the research that you end up doing, the research questions that you end up answering so that when you finish your own research, you have something to compare it to and contrast it to. What are you comparing and contrasting it to? The literature, the other uh, researchers who have investigated similar uh, similar participants, similar problems, uh, similar context, and so then that's what kind of what we're working on now. So let me know if this uh, if this helps. If you still have issues or questions, you want me to look at something, let me know. I know some of you feel that uploading. Uh, to the document only to find out later that you have to change it is a daunting feeling and we've all been there this is part of the process I want you to to uh, not take anything personally that this is just part of the writing process that uh, let you know the only reason the only way that I can provide feedback is is for you to show me something show me your text so I uh, don't feel um, don't feel pressure about changing it. This is really part of the, the process and, and is er, the earlier and the more often that you can share and that we can discuss back and forth your work, I think the easier it is to make changes through the process. I think it's actually more difficult and more stressful to not upload anything or upload very little until the very end. Um, and I think this is a good time to mention the way I'm going to grade the literature review. So at the end of this week on Friday, March 1st, I'm going to be looking at probably in reality on Saturday uh, because I'm going to give everyone all day on Friday to complete the first draft. So on Saturday I'll start looking at your work and I will be looking at your work as if it were a uh, your finished document. What I mean by that is I want to give you feedback and I want to... Uh, give you some ideas of how the examiners are going to be looking at your document and so I want to give you a grade on what I think the end product is. Now many times uh, you may feel you may get a grade that you don't uh, that you want to improve on and so the idea that I, the way that I work each of the sections, the, the literature review, the method section, the results and the discussion section is that I give you an initial grade for, na for in this case I'm going to give you a grade at the end of the week and then I'm going to give, I'm going to assess the entire finished product from, from beginning to the end when you complete your final draft in May. When you finish your com final draft in May I will look at all of your text, each section, and I will change the grade for each of the sections accordingly. As I see, as I, as I feel that they've been improved upon, I will change the grades accordingly. Okay, so everything, all grades will be subject to change until the very, very end of your, your document. But I do think it's important to give you an honest grade at the beginning so that you know, first of all, what to fix through uh, the error codes that I'm going to be using, but also the final grade, the overall expectation of what uh, each of the sections needs to be. I think it's important that you know that uh, at the very, from the very beginning. 
So obviously you're going to have time to change your literature review throughout the rest of the semester, but after this week, obviously we're, need, we're going to need to uh, focus on other aspects of your, of your study. So try to finish up for this week, and uh, this is how I'm going to be dealing with the grading for this week, and try to upload as much as possible, and, and you can still ask questions. I think since this, we're meeting our deadline on Friday, I would ask that after Wednesday, starting on Thursday, that um, I'm simply not going to have much time to look at any other emails. If you send me questions, I would ask that you send me questions by Wednesday, no later than Wednesday of this week. Uh, if you send me questions on Thursday and Friday, uh, there's no guarantee that I'm going to have time to uh, look at it. If, you're, if you want to discuss your thesis, we can certainly schedule time to do that face-to-face -face, uh, any day this week beyond your, our normal uh, tutoring session. But um, usually during crunch time here, during the time to finish up, a, a, it gets a little bit uh, more difficult to respond to the questions towards the end here. All right, so. Uh, we're going to work on um, our literature review in this fashion for this week, and I look forward to meeting each of you. Again, don't feel stressed about the process of writing. Okay, I was reading a book, in fact, I'm currently reading a book, um, I forget the title of it, something like Why Students Can't Write, something like that. Uh, let's see if I can pull it up. It's a really, it's a great book. Why They Can't Write. It's a book on writing, and... One of the things they say in this book is that our writing is never as good as we want it to be. And I can certainly relate to that. I think everyone can relate to that. I think it's just having the habit of mind, the mindset that uh, everything that we produce it can be approved on and that we need to have the right frame of mind to take feedback and just try to improve on it. Uh, and, and that's really the, the message that I want to, to give everyone today is don't feel stressed, take all the, the feedback and continue improving your, your, uh, your work and I think if you, if you do that you'll end up, I think you're going to be happier at the end when you see what you've accomplished over the semester and when you see your final product and you're prepared to give your oral defense um, I think you'll, you'll uh, appreciate the hard work that you put in to uh, create this, this thesis. Okay, so I will stop there for today, for right now, and again, feel free to continue leaving comments in your Google Docs. I'm going through, I, I get an email notification, I'm trying to go through promptly to respond to those. If for any reason I miss it and you don't get a response, uh, yeah, feel free to send me another message in uh, Google Classroom. But uh, yeah, send me your messages and of course bring your questions to our tutoring class. And if you feel that we need to schedule an additional session, obviously let me know.